Hello everyone, welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today we are on the launch pad and we are going to be sending a nice little dune buggy out to Drez and into the Drez Canyon. Uh, just before we get started, first of all, uh, sorry there's no audio at the beginning. Uh, that does get fixed later on, but um, yeah, just for the first half of the video, there's not going to be any, you're not going to be able to hear the game audio engines. Um, some people actually might prefer that, so... Um, if you if you if you prefer not to hear them, great. If you prefer hearing them, it will get fixed later on. So, uh, just pretty basic rocket going out to Dreads. It's a pretty small buggy. Um, like it's like I said, it's just a buggy. So we're not you know we're not doing anything crazy. It's like under a ton basically. Um, uh, another disclaimer: this this mission does not go as planned. So stay tuned for that. There's like eight thousand things that go wrong, and I'll talk through them. So we'll just build up that excitement, shall we? Alright, so we just popped the fairing now. You can see our kind of situation. We have a nuclear stage and we have a lander with the buggy on top of it. And we're just about getting into orbit now. Um, just going to circularize a little bit with that upper stage and then mainly with that nuclear stage. Uh, just That wasn't the intention. Um, that was one of the things that went wrong. I was hoping for a little big rock, but I didn't think that'd be a problem. Spoiler alert, it becomes a problem. Okay, so now we go ahead and circularize. There goes that stage, and now we have the very low TWR nuclear stage, even though we do have seven nuclears. There's um, a lot of fuel on there, and nuclears have horrible TWR. Okay, so just planning our maneuver node out to a Drez. Um, this is where the first major issue comes in. Um, me being an absolute genius decides to plan my maneuver node at the wrong spot. So if you don't know, um, Drez is on an inclined plane. Um, so what you need to do, ideally, if you're going to be doing a Drez flight is you do your burn and then you have to do a plane change, a correction burn a little on. Um, some of you might know this already but just uh, for, the, for those who don't, um, you need to do a, a plane change and plane changes either happen at your periap slash apoaps or your ascending descending node. Your ascending or descending node is more or less like your halfway point basically. Although, okay I should, I should correct that. It either happens at periaps or apaps or at your, at, at your middle point. So I'm just planning my correction burn right now and this is where I screw up because the type of cr um, plane that I'm at, I should be correcting it at my halfway point. Um, so I should be just kind of putting my maneuver node halfway down my orbit um, on my way and then changing it that way. That way it should cost around 200 to 300 meters a second to delta V um, based on the orbit that I'm in. The one I make winds up costing 800 and I wind up fiddling with it for literally a half hour because I was too stupid to realize how stupidly I screwed up. Um, so don't do what I did. Um, think think before you do things. Um, so yeah, uh, that was a, a major, major, major issue. I actually edited out most of the maneuver node planning because I don't think you guys want to stare at me for like 15 minutes even at like this time lapse speed it'll be a long time just fiddling with maneuver nodes as you can see I'm doing my burn now it, it was a mess um, but we're doing the burn and um, we're just gonna get our way out to Drez see that one is 800 I, I spent 800 I really needed to spend you know at most 300 so that's the cost if you you know if you, you have to really think about these things or else you could do what I did um, and then you could, you know, it's just, it's just a complete hassle. So, don't do what I did. <laughs> you know, I, I really should know this. I've, I've done interplanetary many times before. To be honest, I haven't gone to Drez that often because wait, what was Drez? No one's ever heard of Drez. Um, Any, you know, jokes aside, boring Drez. Um, it has a Drez cane though, which is, in my opinion, really cool. Uh, so, yeah, know what you're doing, or else, you know. It'll be a lot, a lot, it'll be a lot more productive for you to kind of know what you're doing and then figure it out versus just completely not know what you're doing and then just get upset for a half hour, um, which is kind of like kind of what I did because I wasn't thinking. So I mean, it's with Kerbal, you know, like if you're doing a Duna mission and you can't, you know, you you know, uh, I can't do it. Maneuver node's not working. Just do like a Mun mission. If you have absolutely no idea what you're doing, do a MUN mission, look at a video online, and then, you know, go from there. 
you know, there's there's no point. Like, when I first started playing this game, I was like, okay, I made it to the Mun, uh, let's go to Elu now. Like, that didn't work. Like, maybe one day I'll show, up the craft, uh, show off the craft I did. It was horrible. It was not even res anything resembling what you should do. So, to any beginners out there, that would be my word of advice for this game. Um, so, yeah. If you've only been to the Mun, do not try to go to Elu. Like I did. Um... But, uh, like, I, uh, we're already here at Drez. So, uh, we're going to start doing our D or our orbital insertion burn into Drez. You can kind of see a nice view of the planet below us. And there should be when we get sound. Um, so, that'll be good. So, we're just slowing down here. And there we go. We are in a pretty inclined orbit, which I was just too genius to fix, which you really shouldn't be in an inclined orbit like that. But I said, eh. It'll be easier to get to the canyon that way, which, to be honest, it kind of was. So, uh, Dress Canyon is actually, you can see it on the map screen. I'm going to go ahead and transfer my Kerbals into the Lander Can. And we're going to go ahead and deorbit ourselves. So, this is, uh, you can kind of see that little, like, trench kind of just above my maneuver node. Uh, not my maneuver node, my little blue orbit line. That is the Dress Canyon. Okay, so time for major mistake number one, or m number two. Major mistake number one was the maneuver nodes. Major mistake number two is this lander situation. So I budgeted about, uh, what is there, a little more than 900 meters a second in delta V in that rock uh, lander. You need 420 meters a second to land, or 430, about there. Probably round up 450 to land on Dreads. So theoretically, once I ditched my buggy, you know, I should have had enough to get back. But you see just there, sticky keys, um, I, I did my deorbit burn way too, way too flat. So I was coming over the Joe's Canyon way too high, so I like shot up, shot up the thrust and I decelerated and I wasted just a ton of delta V. And now look, we have like way below 400 and not enough to get back into orbit. That is an issue. For another time, because look at that, we've landed. And we're just going to go ahead and drop the lander off. And we can see it very gracefully tumble around, plop, uh, and, 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 and. Oh, gee, look at that. It's upright. You now we can disembark one of the Kerbals and it can hop in. Um, another kind of issue with this uh, buggy, just all the issues today, guys. Um, the Kerbal, as you can see, his helmet will stick out of the craft just a little bit. Um, if their helmet's off, it doesn't stick out. But I, you know, I, th I could fix it, but I thought it kind of compromised the look a little bit too much. I mean, you know, it doesn't look great having a Kerbal head there, but eh, it works. No one notices, right, guys? Nobody notices. Okay, so now we're driving over to the Dreads a Canyon and just kind of bouncing along. Pretty low gravity on Dreads, so you kind of got to be careful here not to, like, completely die. Like, oh, there we go. And then we're just going to go ahead and fling ourselves down the end. This thing actually has 700 meters a second to be because that tiny little engine on it. Um, so that is kind of interesting. So here we go. We oh, oh plop. Now my engine fell off, so now I'm just falling to my death. F9! This actually went on for a long time. I tried a lot because I was just impatient and I point is, I took a long time on this. I could have done it a little more quicker if I was more patient, but I finally got it very, very gracefully. I know I'm saying gracefully a lot, but you know, I'm just such a graceful Kerbal, such a high quality. Oh, <laughs> this is this is how you play Kerbal Space Program, folks. You just tumble down the Dreads Canyon while your car flies away from you. That is uh, just how you do it. That is... NASA approved techniques. So we've made it. We've we've made it to our destination, which is the Dres Canyon with our buggy. Yay. Whew. That took a f you know a few seconds. Um, just going around looking trying to pose for some pictures. That purple dot's in the way or pink dot, if anyone knows how to get rid of that. I could probably just look on the forums, but you know. Too lazy. So if someone else can just let me know. Appreciate it. Um, and now we're going to be getting out of here. So um, we're just going to be driving out of here, trying to drive up the side of the canyon like a true Kerbal. No fear, and we just hit the side of it. So let's just take that a little bit slower. And there we go. We can use that uh, little engine to help us get up the side of the canyon. 
This thing is pretty baller though. Look at this little tiny car just zooming up the side of like a 70 degree slope. That is how we do things in the Kerbal Space Program. Up we go, up, 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 up. Try not to waste too much fuel um, because I was kind of thinking, you know, my lander might not be able to make it back. Maybe I'll just use my buggy to make it back into orbit. Well, guess what? I used all the Delta V on that there, or more than I, you know, could use to get into orbit. So that can't get into orbit now. So I just kind of shot myself into the foot with that. Um, oh boy, bouncy, bouncy. So now, now is where we get into a bit of a predicament. How are we going to get back into orbit? Because you know, we had our fun on on Dreads. Um, we we lived in bliss for a while. We didn't think about it. You know, ignorance is bliss. Um, but now we can't, we have to think about it because these Kerbals they're they're getting a bit hungry and they need to get back to Kerbin. And unfortunately, they are on Dreads, which is very far away from Kerbin, and they do not have a lander with enough delta v to get into orbit. Wonder what the planet's gonna be. I'll tell you what the planet could plant. Okay, there we go. He got in. Okay, let's get out of here. Um, that cut was just because I was waiting for the uh, uh, the mothership to come into a good area, a good orbit, or a good uh, height above us. So what do I do? I get as close as I can to orbit, obviously, with the terrier engine on the bottom of the lander. And there it goes, runs out of fuel, and now we're going to use monoprop to get a little more of the way, little more of the way, and will that get us there? It will not. Okay, so now we're just going to take, take the Kerbal out. Unfortunately, that other Kerbal who's in the lander is going to uh, die, um, but, I mean, he could have just stayed on the surface, but <laughs> not died, but... Um, Desperate times. Oh, that could have really not desperate. That guy could have just stayed there. But either way, um, whoever this person is, I can't read the, her name on the tiny little screen during the render that I'm looking at. But uh, we are going to be have to manually dock with the Kerbal. Um, that is our, you know, awesome high-tech solution to, you know, landers. Efficiency, right, guys? Efficiency. That's how we do this. And that's how we do it. In this Piolet YouTube channel, we are efficient creators of craft. By that I mean horrible planners. Or horrible, you know. In summary, don't waste Delta V on your landings. Plan them. <laughs> okay, so that is most of the stuff that has gone wrong with the video done, but we are not quite done yet, guys. This this is not that the, the party is still going. We are still in a catastrophe because we have actually got that docking done good and now we have two of the three Kerbals that we came with that's you know that's pretty good um, and now we can plan our maneuver node back home and we we don't have enough Delta V we wasted all our Delta V messing around doing a correction burn well I guess that's mission failed isn't it What is this? What? What is this? Oh my, yeah. Is it a rescue ship? A refueling rescue? Yes! It is a... It will, it will get us home! It's gonna get the Kerbals home! It's gonna go up and refuel them and they're gonna be able to come home! We are rescuing them! We are saving their lives, guys! We have not abandoned this mission yet. There is hope. There is hope. We can do it. We can do it. Okay, so it's just a pretty basic lander, or lander, rocket. We're just bringing some fuel out to the Kerbals. Uh, more than we need, way more than we need, actually. Um, but, you know, better safe than sorry. Um, just bringing this uh, thing into orbit. We got the two vectors there, and now we're going to have a skipper upper stage, pop the fairing, and there we can see what the situation is looking like for the uh, fuel. There's 70 kilometers. Let's go ahead, get that uh, solar panel out, and we can get ready to circularize. Now, the TWR on this nuclear stage is just absolutely horrible. So the burn was like 12 minutes. I mean, you know, if you guys have done interplanetary burns, those are or interplanetary missions, those are actually semi-common, depending on how big your stage is. You know, other factors for like how far you're going. So this is at like 20 times speed, or 20, yeah, 20 times speed um, during the burn. Actually, this is just our injection burn, but when uh, when we get to our uh, our ejection burn to interplanetary space, 
Um, and this is actually how you properly do it. Um, you know, I would show this to my past self to you know say how stupid I was. So you, you get your you get your target separation indicators right like so, and then um, I will. Well, I'm just kind of messing around to get a little more efficient of an encounter. Um, but then basically what you do is like you just take. See, I was doing the same mistake again, as you can see. But then I'm like, oh ho! What if you do it the correct way? And then it just saved me a ton of delta V. Even though in this situation I could have afforded it because I brought way too much. Because I learned from last time. And then there we go. We can't quite get the encounter there. Um, so I think I just fiddle with it a little more until we get something. It was really being stubborn. So I think I actually, I think I just left it and then I deal with it later. Um, and then here's the really long burn. And we had to go up to 100 kilometers just to stay out of the atmosphere. We only get down to 83, but you know, like I said, better safe than sorry. Okay, there goes the stage, and now we're just on nuclears as we wait very, very, very long. This is very boring, guys. Very boring. And now we are going to be on our way out. We could have done this in two burns to maximize the O-birth effect, but um, that takes even longer, so no. Like I said, we have so much extra fuel. And here's another thing that went wrong. The maneuver node is just completely whacked. Like, look at the delta V remaining, and look at where our orbit is. Like, that is not at all what it's, you know, and I'm pointing at the maneuver node, and look where it's taking you. That orbit is not the orbit it said it would give me. So that is just completely whacked up. Um, oh, well, you know, what more would you expect on this mission now? Um, but we have so much delta V, like I said, we can just kind of fix it. So I kind of fix that there. We do a, at, a, at periaps. And then, um, there we go. We're just going to uh, skip ahead to when we get into Drez because this video is getting a little bit longer than I would like, so I'm not going to bore you guys. To summarize, I did it properly. So here we are coming into Drez, doing our another, like, very super more than 10 minute long burn uh, to slow down because you only have that one nuclear engine as opposed to the seven on the other craft. And then we can go ahead and get ready to do our rendezvous. I'm also probably going to skip most of that just because you guys have already done a rendezvous in this video. You get the point. And here we are. Maybe. No. We are planning our... There we are. So here's the craft, and we are going to do another janky docking, you'll see. This in the, I wouldn't say that something got gone wrong, I just got a little bit too excited with time warp. So as you can see, they're targeting each other, and I went on a time warp too late, and they just kind of whacked. Not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, considering all the other craft that went wrong this mission. So just going to fire up the engines, and we can go ahead and do a docking. They're kind of spinning, but that doesn't matter. We are docked. Okay, now we just need to plan our burn back. I transferred the fuel undocked. I skipped all that stuff because that's boring. And there were so many fuel tanks, it was an absolute faff to try and get them all filled up. I didn't fill them all the way up just because I wanted a good TWR. Um, we filled it like about a third of a quarter. We have 2,000 delta V, which is more than enough. And I used the website transfer window planner, which I mean, you know your transfer window, like uh, Drez to Kerbin is minus 329. But, I mean, it's just easier because Transfer Window Planner literally gives you the day, like the actual, you know, day that you actually should start your burn. Great website. Um, but uh, we're re-entering. Like, we've done it. We're here. We're back. Like, what is this? The mission is going to finally come to an end. After all that, we are finally coming back to Kerbin. Re-entering just like normal. And it looks like finally something is about to go right. And for the most part, something does go right. There's a little bit of a weird thing that goes on here in a second, but here we go. Down, down, down. Pop the chute. And you can see that water looks really kind of weird. Pretty weird, huh? <laughs> that really kind of caught me by surprise. Uh, but. I think there's something glitched with my water textures, but that's just, that's not important at this point, guys. We've made it back to Kerbin, and we have successfully completed another mission. 
that was very satisfying, guys, at the end there. After all that, it was so many hours of just complete nonsense of just screwing up stuff and all that stuff. It was very, very satisfying to get back. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I would like to thank you for watching. Next time, please write or comment to this video. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time, and bye.